Hello grade 9 students! So I am Teacher V and welcome dito sa akin channel. Ang lesson natin for today is about the properties of parallelogram. And our objectives is we're going to use properties to find the measures of angles, sides, and other quantities involving parallelograms. Last week, na discuss na sa inyo kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng quadrilaterals at iba't ibang klase ng quadrilaterals. So, isa na nga sa types of quadrilateral na pag-uusapan natin is yung parallelogram. So, iikot lang muna yung discussion natin today about parallelograms. And aside from that, pinakita na rin sa inyo ng mga teachers niyo yung iba't ibang properties ng parallelogram. So, the first property, so i-recall lang natin kasi ito yung gagamitin natin para makakapag-solve tayo ng mga measurement. Okay? So, you have to memorize as much as possible or even though not uh, memorize, dapat, kumbaga, ma-retain sa isip ninyo yung mga properties na to kasi ito yung basis natin para makapag-solve tayo ng mas madali. For the first property, in a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. So, pag opposite sides congruent, property 2, in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. So, you can see, opposite sides at saka opposite angles, they are congruent. Next, sa property 3, in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. Kapag ka-consecutive ang ating angles or yung magkakatabing angles, magkakasunod na angles, hindi sila congruent. Okay? Unlike dito, sa opposite angles, congruent sila, pero pag consecutive angles, they are supplementary. And when we say supplementary, that is equivalent to 180 pag inad mo sila. Okay? Then for property number 4, the diagonal of a parallelogram bisect each other. So, pagka nakabuo tayo ng diagonal sa ating parallelogram, meron tayong mapuform na two diagonals at yung diagonals na yun ay magbabisect with each other or mag-intersect sila. Hahatiin niya into two equal parts yung ating diagonals. And for the last property, we have this. The diagonal of a parallelogram forms two congruent triangles. Okay, so pag nagkaroon na tayo ng diagonal sa ating parallelogram, mayroong dalawang congruent triangles na mabubuo. Ngayon kung um, may mga questions ka pa about sa properties of par parallelogram, meron akong ginawa ng video about doon or about dito. So in-explain ko na yung iba't ibang properties ng mas detailed. So pwede mong panoorin na muna yon, then saka ka pumunta rito. Kasi today, ang gagawin natin is magsusolve na talaga tayo. Okay, we will be answering the first learning task. Okay, at may mga parallelograms na to and may mga corresponding questions. Okay? So, kung ready ka na at hindi ka na nalilito sa limang properties, pwede na natin gawin itong learning task number one. So, below is a parallelogram fire. Okay, so parallelogram F-I-R-E or fire. Consider the given information. Use the parallelogram properties to answer each item and then show your solution. Okay, so you can notice that we have a one parallelogram and then meron tayong diagonals, so dalawang diagonals, and these are the questions. You have to show your solution and take note the following given. Yung given natin, based dito sa problem is yung FI or segment FI, that is equivalent to 3x minus 5cm. Then yung IR, so where is IR? Okay, this one, IR. That is 2y minus 7. RE, so RE, this one is the RE. That is x plus 7 centimeters. And yung EF, so EF, that is y plus 3 centimeters. So, ang gagawin natin is we're going to answer these questions. Isa-isahin lang natin. Number one, what is the value of x? We're going to find the value of x. And ang merong mga x na ginamit is yung fi and re. And, and that is true because fi and re are opposite sides. Di ba? Magka-opposite sides sila. So, hindi sila magkatabi ng side. So, opposite sila. At tandaan sa property number 1, 
in a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. Ibig sabihin, kung ano ang sukat ng Fi, yun din ang sukat ng Re. And dahil nga sa property number 1, we can say that 3x minus 5, which is the measurement of Fi, is equal to the measurement of Re. So, x plus 7. Okay, x plus 7. Kasi equal nga sila, di ba? So, ipag-equal lang natin silang dalawa. 3x minus 5 is equal to x plus 7. Next, ang gagawin na natin is we need to isolate the variables or may mga variables. Katulad nitong x, ilagay natin dito sa kabilang side. Pag samasamahin natin sa side na to, yung may mga variables. And sa kabilang side naman, yung puro mga numbers lang. At once we isolate this x to the other side or we move it to the other side, magiging negative siya. So, 3x minus x then is equal to 7. Okay, why is it naging plus 5 dito? So, ito namang negative 5 ay minove natin to the other side. Kaya naging positive 5. And then, simplify. 3x minus x, that is equivalent to 2x. Kasi may invisible 1. So, 2x is equal to 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. And then, we divide both sides to 2 para makancel yung 2 at maiwan na lang ang x. Kasi ang hinahanap natin is yung x. So, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, and then ito magiging x na lang. So, that's why the value of x is equal to 6. Nasagot na natin yung first question. The value of x is equal to 6. Now, the next question is how long is the segment Fi? So, Fi, ang tinatanong yung mismong sukat na niya. So, paano naman natin yan is solve? So, given na nga natin na yung Fi is equal to 3x minus 5 centimeters, we're just going to substitute the value of x to our given. So, kung ang x na nga natin ay 6, saan galing ang 6? Yun yung nasolve natin kanina, di ba? Yung x daw ay 6. So, ngayon, papalitan natin yung x na to ng 6. So, that's why we have 3 times 6. Okay? Kasi 3x minus 5. So, 3 times 6 is 18 minus 5. The answer is 13. And don't forget the unit of measure. That is centimeter. So, ang fi natin is 13 centimeters. So, kung ito ay 13 centimeters, 13 centimeters na rin ang re. Kasi opposite side sila. Next question. What is the value of y? Ang next na tinatanong naman ay yung value naman ng y. So, alin ba rito yung may mga value ng y? So, given, okay, yung i, r, at saka yung ef. So, again naman yung gamitin natin. i, r is equal to 2y minus 7 centimeters and ef is y plus 3 centimeters. So, ito yung i, r and yung ef. Okay, so makikita ninyo opposite sides na naman sila. At dahil opposite sides, we can say that they are congruent or equal. So, property 1 pa rin ang gagamitin natin. And ito, opposite sides are congruent. So, lagyan lang ulit natin ang equal sign. Ayang dalawa, equal lang natin sila. So, yung IR is 2Y minus 7 is equal to Y plus 3, yung EF. And then, katulad ng ginawa natin kanina, isolve lang natin sila. I-isolate natin itong may variable and which is y. So, isama natin siya dito sa kabila na may variable din. So, that's why magiging 2y minus y. So, nagbago ng sign kasi nag-move tayo sa kabila. Then, dito naman sa other side, we have 3. So, ito yung 3. And itong negative 7, minove lang natin dito. Kaya naging positive. Positive 7. Then, simplify. 2y minus y is y na lang. Then, 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. Therefore, our y is equal to 10. So, nakuha na natin yung answer sa letter C. That is 10. How about the, th the fourth one? How long is EF? So, tinatanong yung EF. So, since meron na tayong y, madali na lang natin makukuha itong EF. So, ito na yung y natin, di ba? 10. And ang EF natin, based sa given, is y plus 3. So, y plus 3, i-substitute lang natin yung nakuha nating y, which is 10. 10 plus 3 is 
13. And don't forget the unit of measure, which is centimeters. All right. Next, number or letter E from your answers in B and D, what is the perimeter of parallelogram fire? So makikita natin na yung FI is 13, so 13 din to. Then yung EF is 13, so ibig sabihin 13 din to. So makikita ninyo pare-pareho sila ng sides or equal. And therefore, kapag equal yung ating sides ng parallelogram, ito ay masasabi nating rhombus. Hindi natin pwedeng sabing square kasi ang angle ay hindi naman 90 degree. So this is a rhombus kasi equal yung kanyang sides. At dahil equal yung kanyang sides, ang gagawin na lang natin is uh, to get the perimeter of a rhombus, we will just uh, multiply the sides to 4. Or, pwede rin namang i-add mo yung lahat ng sides. So, 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13. Pero para mas madali, is i-times na lang natin siya sa 4. So, 4 times 13, the answer is 52 centimeters. Kasi yun yung ating measure. So, nasagatan na natin yung letter E, and that is 52 centimeters. Okay? Next, punta na tayo sa diagonal, diagonals. So, diagonals FR and EI meet at D. And DE, so DE, ito, DE is 8 centimeters, and FR is 13 centimeters. Ang question is, how long is EI? So, kung ang ating DE, so itong DE natin ay 8, ang kabuuan ng EI is 16. Kasi dodoblihin lang natin yan. So, kung 8 dito, ay di 8 din dito. So, 8 times 2, 16. So, EI is equivalent to 16 centimeters. Next, how long is the DF? Yung DF naman. So, DF, ito naman yung tinatanong. Ang given natin, FR is 13. So, ang gagawin mo, kanina, nag-times tayo dito dahil kalahati lang. E, eh, divide Di-divide natin sa 2. Yung FR, which is 13, i-divide mo sa 2. And that is 6.5. Meaning to say, yung FD natin is 6.5. So, 6.5 plus 6.5 is 13. So, that's why we have FR as 13. Okay? So, ayan. Nakikita ninyo na nagamit natin yung... Uh, mga prop, yung property number 1 sa pagsusolve or pagsagot ng mga learning task. So, kailangan lang tandaan nyo yung mga properties na yun para hindi kayo mahirapan. At tama yung makukuha nating sagot sa mga measurement. Alright? So, kung may mga questions kayo, you can just follow me on Facebook. So, meron akong page, Vintage Channel. And of course, dito sa YouTube, you can also ask questions using our comment section. Uh, nagre-reply dyan si ma'am. Kung matagal man, minsan, uh, pasensya na kasi busy rin si teacher V sa pag-check and paggawa ng grades. Okay? Pero kayang-kaya mo yan, kaya huwag tayong susuko sa mathematics. Alright? So, don't forget to share this also to your classmates or friends. Baka kailangan din nila ng help sa pagsagot nila ng mga modules. Okay, see you again in my next video and goodbye!